I want to talk about my husband, the man I met in my youth, the man I have been married to for 30 years. He never called me by name, not even one day. And he referred to me as honey. Those who understand Kikamba, he used to call me Mwetu Aombe Kibeticha Atangwa, as in daughter of the Aombe clan, wife of the Atangwa clan. Those are the names he used to call me most of the times. There is not even one day I've ever been to a shop to buy a pair of earrings, to buy bangles, to buy, you know, all those things that men give their wives. I never did. He bought everything for me. He went to the shop and he brought me beautiful things. And he was such a loving man in his own way. And uh, I'll talk about him as my lover, my friend, the father of my children, a, a friend of many others. Every single day, he used to wake up at 3 a.m. and go to the bathroom, meditate. Then I asked him, why do you wake up so early in the morning? He said, I want to meditate. I said, okay, fine. Then he said, because the light is disturbing you, he was so caring, I will be going to have my shower in darkness. Of all those years, he had his showers in darkness, he only put on the lights when he was going to the dressing room. On the day before he went to be with the Lord, he called me in the afternoon let's say early evening, and he was in very, very high spirits. He told me this place, he was at the ranch, has rained so much. It is so beautiful, it is so green. I wish you were here. But again, the last words that he says, he told me, I am in paradise. Those are the final words that my husband shared with me, and I believe is in paradise, and is doing well where he is. He had a penchant for technology, and was always challenging us to beat him at it. He referred him to himself as mutula.com, and was aptly named MK, which, which is how he was commonly referred to. On 26th of April, which is the last day he spent at our offices along Gong Road, it's a few meters from here. We had a meeting to discuss various issues, including a petition that had been filed against him. Shortly thereafter, I met him at the car park on his way out in his usual style, because he knew he was going to leave us in the office informed me that he's going to paradise. And he drove himself out of K Group Center for the last time. The last time I saw him alive. 27th April, the following day, while I was preparing to have a meeting with a gentleman sitting just here, Mr. Vora, I received a very disturbing message that he was very unwell and I needed to rush to Machakos. It was traumatizing because in my own estimation that would have taken me at least a minimum of one hour. He was once quoted in the past interview saying, and I quote, I had a purpose to live and not just to exist, a purpose to succeed in life and true to this he kept to kept his word to the very end. Dad, may the Lord, our God, rest you, our hero, our father, our mentor, in eternal peace. 
And this is how we want to remember Mutula Kilonzo. Very humorous all the times. When you even when you're discussing difficult issues, he must all the times come in with some kind of banter uh, and the jokes. I tell you, recently when we had that case in the Supreme Court, and then his daughter, Kathy here, became a star. So I called him and said, that little girl is brilliant. He told me, what about me? <laughs> but then he went on to say, look, many people have asked me for her hand. And I said that I cannot substitute brains for cows. <laughs> and therefore her hand is not available <laughs> to anybody. We have worked for a long time with uh, Mutula. I don't want to speak at this time. I only want to thank members of his family who have shown courage because that is what we are called upon to demonstrate at a difficult time like that, like this time. And I am very grateful to have been associated with them. And I want to, and to see all of them united, strong, speaking very sp specific, proper English. <laughs> it's very, it is really important. It's very, very important indeed. I would like you take up that same spirit and from you get us one of you to take take up these matters in uh, well let us not talk about politics now <laughs> but we are all talking about politics even those of us who are about to leave it so ladies and gentlemen, I don't really want to speak on these matters, but I would like to be able to say whatever we can do to help the family and to assist you in the next weeks. Please do not feel shy to call upon us. We are here, and we're not here just to say goodbye and get away. We are here for the reason that here is a friend of ours, a genuine friend who was a close personal friend. And we all admired him. And we would like to continue to help you in whichever way it is possible. So please don't, don't be shy to call upon us and speak to us freely, freely, very freely as to what we should do to assist you. In 2002, when we were defeated, then as Kanu, by the Rainbow Coalition, and I remember Mutula, and maybe this is the occasion for me to say this, when we were in a State House and we are we are watching the results. And many people did not believe Khan would lose. And we were many, we were about 20 sitting in State House. And the numbers were on the screen, and the numbers kept on, the gap kept on widening. And I remember one gentleman, who I don't want to mention his name, said, there's more you know about this, uh, this story that is going on on the, on the screen. Because many people expected that Moi would do something. And the numbers would change. And so we went and prepared the concession speech. And we were many, we were about 20. By the, by the time we arrived in Serena, we were three. <laughs> because uh, the rest of the people had taken off. And in conclusion, therefore, let me say we are celebrating the life 
of a patriotic Kenya. I want to join those who have said that everything will be done to ensure that Mutula Kilonzo gets a befitting and a deserving send-off, devoid of any speculations. It is unfortunate he did not have the chance to make his maiden speech at the Senate. However, if I was to imagine what he would say on that day, the words of Winston Churchill on his maiden prime ministerial speech in 1940 ring true. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. What is our aim? I can answer in one word, victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory, however long and hard the road may be, for without victory, there is no survival. In the days and weeks that have gone by since Tata left us, we've been touched by the individuals from all walks of life who've come to pay their respects. We've been touched by how emotional and bereft they have felt. It has also reinforced how proud we were of him and how proud he was of his family. That this man from a village in Borni achieved so much in his all too short life and yet remained true to his principles is an inspiration to all of us. Rudyard Kipling in his poem, If, wrote, if you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Tata, you will be missed every minute and every hour. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work for which you have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us here, dedicated to the great task remaining before us. And this we can promise you. We will persevere and we will build from where you left and we will not disappoint. We will remain united and we will maintain and grow your legacy. We will push and stand for what we believe in. And we will attain those lofty goals you expected us to achieve. Tata, we will always love you. May your soul rest in peace forevermore. Thank you.